Um, I'm pretty much sure that I can give you a short snippet of music without getting caught by uh, copyright infringement. But um, more than that, and um, I've had a lot of videos that I've lost because I gave you too much music. Now this was an old record that I got from the uh, thrift store for a dollar, which is a great deal, because new records are usually starting at 39, going up to 49 for a record, an old-fashioned record, 20 minutes, you know. 20 minutes aside. Now these old records, I don't know if they're in the database of social media, but um, I'm not going to take a chance because then you're not going to hear what I have to say. Now what's very strange is I was watching YouTube a couple days ago and there's somebody who recorded vinyl records, the whole record of like Pink Floyd. and they haven't been cited for copyright infringement and there's all kinds of these vinyls it's so bad because I mean it's good for them because I enjoyed that it was a nice YouTube channel I just don't know how they got past the copyright stuff because I had karaoke songs up karaoke songs so the music itself was not from the recording, the official recording. It was the karaoke background, which is a, you know, not the original band. It's some other band that plays the notes and the music. And then you have a different singer, the karaoke singer, and I was cited. So why was I cited and this other one can play full LPs of the original music? I don't know. We're wanting to follow up on um, secret things that weren't reported back in the day because of official secrets. But, you know, back in the day was so far back in history that by now it shouldn't be classified anymore. So one of the items that uh, we were asking about was a tank battle between Nazi Germany and uh, Soviet Russia in World War II, where we at one time we saw a report that said um, the Germans used a nuclear weapon against the Russians. And why? Well, basically because the official story was that only the Americans had nuclear weapons in World War II. And this story was, um, no, the Germans had it as well. Was it a full nuclear bomb? I don't think so. I think it might have been a dirty bomb, which is not a nuclear explosion. It's uh, an, a conventional explosion with mm, nuclear material, but there's very little information. But that did come out on the Internet. We saw that a couple of years ago. I haven't seen anything since. Why do we want to know about this? Because we're trying to confirm the David Wilcock, Corey Good stories that there was a secret space program going back to even before World War II. So we're looking at um, stories of advanced technology that could have been suppressed due to national security concerns at the time. And this indication that uh, Germany might have had nuclear weapons or World War II um, tends to add to the possibilities that there were secrets that were not released to the general public 
Because when you first listen to David Wilcock and Corey Good talk about secret space programs going way back to this time period, when you first hear it, you go, uh, there's no way. There's no way. Because we are so heavily censored to believe what we heard was what we heard, and that was all there was to it. But different um, commentators have talked about, for example, the Germans had a device called the Bell. Was it real or just a fake story? Can't really say, but it was working towards anti gravity. World War II. And it was been mentioned in several different books. So, just trying to get more information to possibly make you more open to the ideas that David Wilcock and Corey Good had. Now, in uh, the first movie version of their disclosure, um, they showed pictures of conventional diesel, diesel submarines flying through space towards the moon. And when you see the graphic, you go, oh, man, this is so corny. This is like 1950s sci-fi. This dumb. But if you think about it, what better space vehicle would there be than a submarine from World War II? If it's good to go down... Underneath water, it's watertight. It holds air inside of it. So if you could get it up into space, you could certainly live on it. And, well, what would it mean? Well, in order to get one of these submarines up into space... Uh, you couldn't really put it on a rocket. It's just not the right shape. But if this anti-gravity machinery worked, it would um, still be a problem of, uh, you know, the reports of this bell from World War II was that it was very large. So it would have to be miniaturized. But if they could make miniaturized versions of the anti-gravity technology and attach them to a World War II German submarine, you should be able to anti-gravit off out of the ocean and up into the air and up into space. It still seems very far-fetched. Unless they had help. I mean, these could, stories could be what's known as soft disclosure. In other words, we're not going to tell you what really happened. We're going to give you mm, stories. But if they had extraterrestrial help, and the extraterrestrials were advanced... And they're only dealing with the elite on the planet, the leadership of the planet, who didn't want the rest of us to know anything about the extraterrestrials. Why would the extraterrestrials only want to deal with the leadership of these countries and not the, uh, the general population? Well... Maybe they, I don't know, I don't know. 
Maybe they were dealing with um, regular members of the human population, but the people who were very smart. Maybe they were just dealing with top scientists and top engineers. And the rest of us that were working on, well, not me, because I wasn't around back then, but the rest of us that were working around on the farm, um, or, you know, we're working in a grocery store or driving a cab. They didn't want anything to do with us. They only wanted the cream of the crop. It just seems likely that the extraterrestrials were around back in those days. Because if you think about how primitive human civilization is, I mean, the um, internal combustion engine in the Model T Ford was, you know, I don't know, maybe 1908 or 1915 or something. So maybe like a hundred years ago. Um, you know, all the centuries before that, those extraterrestrials um, could be so advanced that, um, you know, it wasn't that they just got their, their technology in the past hundred years. They had it for hundreds of years, thousands of years. If Earth is, or the solar system is, three and a half billion years old, that's an awful long time for um, other civilizations to have developed before us. Not just necessarily on planet Earth, but in if you look at the number of stars out there, uh, there's an awful lot of other stars, other galaxies, where life could have arisen and could have developed much faster than here. So... And I'm more sure of that than I am of you know, any of these other kind of stories that you know you find in the back pages of the internet. I am most sure that there are advanced extraterrestrials, and they're way ahead of us. So it could also be that advanced extraterrestrials. Um, seeded um, the galaxy with lots of technology and then they left and that dumb people like me um, found this technology and um, never really figured it out but maybe we saw a keyboard and we started playing around on a keyboard and accidentally started the engines up on some thing that ended up taking us off into space and then we got someplace way far away from earth in this spaceship and um, the engine stopped and I don't really know how what I did to start the engines and um, I'm marooned now in a spaceship that's advanced technology and me and my friends um, we don't know how to operate the machinery the air and the heat um, are still running and we're uh, marooned on a spaceship and um, we haven't found anybody you know that knows anything about anything you know we didn't take advance uh, advanced uh, any kind of thing at all we're just regular people so um, you know we're living on this spaceship and we keep hoping someone smart will arrive on our spaceship and uh, help us start up the engines and the navigation system so we can figure out where we are. Um, this is a true story. This is a story of, uh, well, tune in to the next um, story and I'll tell you.